few years ago, I went on the ultimate journey. I set off from London and landed in Buenos Aires before a short hop to Ushuaia, the most southerly city in the world. From here, I boarded an icebreaker ship to cross the most treacherous seas on the planet. Why? Antarctica. Yes, I had the privilege of visiting before it all melted. I went snowshoeing, kayaking, I slept in a hole, I posted a letter back home, I mountaineered around crevasses, we even sang songs on Christmas Day. And then, there were the penguins. These curious little things were everywhere. They smelled dreadful. But we had just arrived at the beginning of the Antarctic summer and the baby chicks had started to hatch. It was a real honour to see these adorable creatures in their natural habitat. And I wanted to recreate that habitat and a penguin in Blender. Nice segue there, Neil. Well done, me. Anyway, the plan. After looking through photos and videos from my trip, I knew I wanted to create a photorealistic snowy scene with the beautiful Antarctic mountains, icebergs, snow and sea to complement a penguin front and centre. It's probably worth noting at this point that I really don't know everything that I need to in order to make this work. I mean, it's quite different from making just, you know, buildings. But, um, we'll see. What's the worst that could happen? Let's get started. So I opened up a new Blender file and realised quickly that I needed reference photos. These are so tough to find. I mean, I only had a hundred. I decided to model this penguin as I had suspiciously good front and side shots, but also because some of the other penguins looked like they wanted a fight. Who wants some then, eh? I opened up the sculpting mode and with mirroring on, started building out the body of the penguin, followed by the tail and the head. I then smoothed the lumpy mesh and matched it up with the profile of the reference penguin. Next, I built out the... Arms? Wings? Flippers. Next, I built out the flippers. This is probably not what you're meant to do, but I just pulled at the mesh until an anemic flipper came out and just moulded it into the correct shape outlined by the grease pencil. It seemed to work. So I did the same thing for the feet, pulling them out and forming claws. And I'm quite happy with the result, actually. Yeah. Now, it's time for some detail, so I brought out the eyes and then creased in the beak. And with that, the base model of the penguin is done, but let's add some materials. Indeed, so using texture painting, I started with a base colour of black and added in sections of white for the belly. I added some detail to the head and painted in the salmon coloured beak before doing the same thing on the feet. Et voila! I actually, I actually really like that, it's so cute! <laughs> oh. Hold on, we're not done yet. I followed a tutorial to create a feather by attaching a particle system to a cylinder and combing it into shape. Then, tracing out the feathers in the reference, I arranged several of them on the tail, shrinking and elongating as needed. To make the penguin look realistic, I also needed to give it some fur. From this photo, you can see that it has short fur on the head and flipper, medium length fur on the belly, and very long fur at the bottom. To do this then, I needed three hair particle systems, one for each length of fur, and I used weight painting to tell Blender where on the model the fur should appear. Red means lots of fur, and blue means none at all. It took quite a long time to finish this part because I needed to comb all of the hair properly, and my computer was starting to struggle with the sheer number of hairs that I wanted to render. But just look at the result, it's beautiful! Now that the penguin is done, it's time to build an environment for him to live in, starting with the rock he's going to sit on. A couple of people in my last video suggested that I use more add-ons in order to make things slightly more efficient. Good point. So... I'm going to use the rock generator. This is available as the Mesh Extra Objects add-on, and it allows you to create lots of different rocks and stones with varying levels of detail. I just decided to go over smooth rock and I applied a texture I found on the internet. Yeah, not bad. But let's build him an ocean to wistfully look out upon, like the captain of a ship. 
Following a tutorial, I created the sea as a large cube and added a volume absorption material node to make deeper parts of the sea darker than the surface. Then it was straight on to using another add-on, C, I'm learning, called the ANT landscape to generate some mountains for the background. I lined these up in the camera's viewport such that the bases of the mountains were under the water and then created the ground under the penguin. I added a dark rocky texture to all of the mountains because I wanted to cover them with snow using the real snow add-on, but when I tried this, the number of polygons ballooned massively. So some creativity was required. I found a technique where you could display one colour if the faces were all pointing upwards and another if they weren't. Make that top colour white and... There you go, instant snow. After I applied this to the other mountains, I put in motion the notion of brewing the potion that is the ocean, using a modifier that generates waves with both regular and chaotic properties. Then, using the dynamic sky add-on, I attempted to create a sky matching the same dreary colours of my reference photo. Ah, <sighs> feels just like home. From here, I reduced the roughness of the sea to make it more reflective and turned down the alpha a bit to give it more transparency. Oh! Now, no Antarctic scene is complete without icebergs, so I started modelling a few amorphous blobs from an icosphere and followed a tutorial to create the ice material. Placing these into the scene, I reshaped them further so that I could see the colour become greener the deeper the ice sat in the water. The final thing to do was to apply that snow add-on back into the foreground because I wanted to make the close-up snow look more realistic. And with that, we're done. All I have to do now is press render. I think it's turned out really well. Not perfect by any means, but I think the penguin may well be the best thing I've ever made in Blender. I'm really proud of it, and I've enjoyed crafting this all together. If you also found this interesting, then you should watch this video next, where I challenge myself to make yet another cool thing in Blender.